one of your biggest cases, obviously, with Arthur Thompson Jr. Mm. When you go to mandate for that, I think it's one of the biggest case, one of the biggest Scottish cases ever. Mm. And uh, what was the process for you in there when you were doing remand? Because I think it was over three hundred witnesses as well. Uh, in that the, case. Proce the process of uh, uh, the remand was I was familiar with what they call the punishment block. People know it as the Wendy house because it was like a designed as a not not as a doll's house, but it's just a a sterile area where if somebody kicks off, they're there for punishment. Uh, I was aware of it. I got took there for reception because in Scotland you've not got a category system as such. Whereas if they believe that you that you've got the funds or access to individuals to aid and help to escape. The security within the prison is their remit to make sure you don't escape, pose a threat to the public or anybody to help you. So while I was in on remand in the segregation unit, I was held in solitary confinement for eight months. I was held under conditions that I met no other prisoners. I was held under conditions that I couldn't even cuddle my own family because it's behind a bulletproof screen. And the reason why all that's in place is in case even the visitors turn up and hand you a handgun to escape. And I kept saying, and why would I want to escape? That's like an admission of guilt. Mm -hmm. And they laughed, they thought the funny side of it. But it was all to do with psychology. There was good screws, there was bad screws, and there was some evil fuckers uh, lighting newspapers and putting them under your door. Was there? Uh, and, and talking through the side of the door to tell you, tell me how I was going to end up like my two friends who were shot dead in the car. And that was good uh, because I asked him if he was open the spy hole so I could see who he was. Mm -hmm. He's obviously brave enough to come to the door. This is the forerunner of the keyboard gangster. So if he never opened the spy hole, I can't see who it is. So he can st st squeak through the door, whatever threats he's going to do. So that's trying to intimidate you? Trying to intimidate me. So for eight months, uh, the lights on, if you can imagine, every 15 minutes your spy hole getting lifted up and done it, it becomes like a tick near clock. Uh, so under the conditions, I read a lot, I studied a lot, you tend to find out who you are in the, in the conditions. But as I said, there was good ones that intervened, uh, but they couldn't be seen to be intervening. Because mm -hmm. I'm the devil in disguise as mm -hmm. far as everybody else is Number concerned. Number one target. And when the whole, the whole charade blows up in my face about a, a, a confession that I'm supposed to have made to an individual who turns out to be, people called this Dennis Woodman, Wood, uh, uh, Dennis uh, uh, Wilkinson, a supergrass. He was never a supergrass, he was a serial perjurer. For your audience, a supergrass is somebody who has worked in criminal enterprises with two or more people for many, many jobs. And they then go and help the authorities and turn on the people who they worked with. They become a super grass then. When somebody's inventing confessions for a whole variety of different people, they're committing perjury on a frequent basis, so therefore they're a serial perjurer. And without him, there wouldn't be a trial. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked on the steps of the High Court and archive footage for a public inquiry and nothing was done. So people say to me, oh, you were lucky to go to that trial. Maybe I was. That was because I was astute enough to know the system. And it was astute enough to sit there and listen to this star crown witness swearing in his two kids' dead ashes that what I said to him was true when his kids were alive and well. And the prosecution knew exactly that he was a, a convicted pervert, a sex offender. And, and I used to look at the prosecution every day and call them perverts until Donald Finley told me to behave myself. So I, I behave myself because that's his environment, James. If uh, There's no point in me. So I, I know what I was wanting to do. I was wanting to make a point and do something, but... When you get charged, how long was it you get, when you get remanded? How long? How many days after? For charge to remand, eight, eight months. And when you were in there, your two pals, is it Bobby Glover, Joe Hanlon, um, two very good friends of yours, mm. well, that's when you were in remand. Mm. Your head must have been scrambled as well, it must have been a tough it time was. for your life. It was, that's why the newspaper would get put under my door. Mm -hmm. That's the whole time, they try to break you, they mm -hmm. try to wear you down, 
Uh, but do you think I'm, that gave you the mere fire to, to go on and fight even further? Uh, no, because there was an element before then when I was on the Young Offenders in Long uh when I was 17. Uh, an accident happened in the dining hall where a friend of mine was involved in a fight and you get up to get your lunch or your dinner, you've got a steel tray, James, and there's bits, portions on the tray. Mm -hmm. uh, something happened and this guy was going to get it anyway in the exercise yard. So I went to throw the tray and it was like a frisbee. It missed everybody in the uh, prison officer right in the side of the fucking head. And nobody else saw it apart from the one behind the, the where they served the food. And he looked at, right at me and went, fucking saw that. So I got right kicking. I got dragged all the way down to uh, uh, Longer Gans, the segregation unit. And they put us on a, an escape uh, protocol, which means you've got to give them your clothes out. Now at that time I had maybe 80% body mass psoriasis. Uh, you've got to take your clothes off in front of them. Totally embarrassed. But you have a year and if you don't take them off, they're going to drag them off you. So I've took the clothes off. They gave me a, uh, a pyjamas to put on, a pair of slippers, and then the door shuts. And then it gets opened again for you. You, you, you don't see any that's the prison officers, it's, it's giving you this. And on one occasion, there was a scuffle outside the cell with me and a prison officer that resulted in the buttons came off my pyjama top and flung back in the cell with one slip. I know I'm laughing, but maybe, maybe I shouldn't have laughed. But it is funny. And, and I think you've, you've got, got to laugh and all, but, you? Okay. but if, you, if you can imagine this scenario, it all happens that quick that, and it's fucking cold in these places as mm -hmm. well. Uh, putting your, no putting your foot in the slot, you can't get two feet in the one slipper. So you're using it like a skateboard or a surfboard just to stand off the cold floor mm -hmm. uh, with your shirt tied, the, 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 the pyjama bottom tied, and, and just looking at your environment and going, how the fuck did you get here?